Okay, this is page uh, 254. I am going to look at number 8 with you and number 13. Um, number 8 says, use SSS to explain why the triangles in each pair are congruent. So you're given the fact that they're congruent. So I'm going to use not only the picture, but the name of the triangles to link together congruent parts. So for example, um, DE is four units, and so is BC. So both of those sides are equal. And then CE is three units, so is BD. So I'm gonna put double marks on those because they're different. So I want to go ahead, I'd like you to list out, if we're gonna use SSS, what are the three sides you're using? So I'm going to start by writing BC, segment BC is congruent to segment DE, comma, and then um, DE, no, I'm sorry, CE, segment CE is congruent to segment BD, and the reason is that's given to us. And it's given to us with the numbers on the picture. Okay, so I have um, two of my sides. I need a third side. Well, segment uh, DE here, I'm sorry, segment CD right here, is the triangle, or is one of my sides in segment, or in triangle BCD, and side CD is one of my sides in triangle CED. So that is a example of reflexive property. So I'm going to mark that as my third side. So I have three marks. So I'm going to write that as DC is congruent to segment DC. And the reason is the reflexive property of congruence. So I'm going to abbreviate here a little bit. Reflexive property of congruence. So I have just demonstrated the three sides that are congruent. So that's the type of thing I'd like you to write down. Um, the last thing I want to do is finish this out by stating the two triangles that are congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and just recopy these triangle names right here. So I'm going to say that um, triangle BCD is congruent to triangle EDC and the reason is SSS. So we've done a mini proof here. That'll help us as we get to larger proofs. Um, okay, 13, we are given B is the midpoint of DC. Uh, AB is perpendicular to DC. I'm trying to prove that ABD is congruent to triangle ABC. So I have uh, here B is the midpoint of DC. I'm looking here at this given. So I am looking at what was exactly written above. So remember, we call that given. So my reason is given. Now, I'm not going to mark anything on my picture because I haven't really written down a congruence statement. So now I want to look at that and look at the next line. The next line says definition of midpoint. Well, if DC is the segment, and I am told that point B right here is the midpoint, well, that means that DB and BC are congruent. B chopped that in half. So that would be when the midpoint just does that, that's my next line over here on the left. So segment DC, I'm sorry, let me back up, not DB, erase that. Segment DB, oops, segment DB is going to be congruent to segment BC. Okay? All right, next one is given to me over here. I, I see the word given, so go back up to the top. Here's the second given, so let's write that in there. S uh, segment AB is perpendicular to segment DC. Now, the only thing that I could add is a right angle, but I already see it right here. So that, again, doesn't show me anything that's equal. So let's read this next line. This is new. Tr uh, angle ABD and angle ABC are right angles. And when you look at the picture, um, we have angle ABD and ABC. Yeah, that makes sense. That's just what perpendicular lines do. So that's what we would call definition of perpendicular lines. So let me back up here. Um, we are going to write that as definition of perpendicular lines. Okay. 
All right, I still don't have anything congruent, so let's read the next line. The next line says, um, angle ABD and angle ABC are congruent. Well, ABD and ABC are 90, 90 and 90 are equal, that makes sense. Um, but what we call that is a right angles theorem. And again, this is a new concept or a new name for you. Right angles, I'm going to shorten the word theorem because I'm running out of space here. Right angles theorem. So when we list two angles are congruent, because they're 90, it's the right angles theorem. Okay, so I have here, one thing I want to point out, um, I have number two is a side, okay? Number five is an angle, okay? And so when I have this, I don't, I could mark congruent marks on there, but I'm going to view here this right angle. I'm going to just know that these two sides are equal. Okay, moving on. Letter F I need to fill in. When I read the reason, it says reflexive property. Well, I'm looking for one side that's in both triangles, so when I look here, segment AB is in triangle ADB, and segment AB is in the other triangle. So there's my reflexive right there. So I'm going to put double marks on it, because I already have single, and I'm going to list that segment out. So I'm going to have segment AB is congruent to segment AB. That is my final side. So when I see this, I see a side, an angle in the middle, and a side. On the other triangle, I see a side, an angle in the middle, and a side. So this is SAS. So I now know my triangles are congruent with SAS.